I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM. And this morning, IBM just released a very big announcement. Now, I've known about that announcement for a long time now, but now I can finally talk about it. But before I tell you what my biggest concern about this announcement is, let's first go over what is actually the big deal. So today, IBM released their plan for how they're going to build the world's first large-scale and fault-tolerant quantum computer. So what does that actually mean? What does large-scale mean and what does fault-tolerant mean? Well, large-scale just basically means a lot of qubits. You know, if we want to actually run useful quantum algorithms that are going to be able to solve practical problems for this world, we need a lot of qubits. Now then, if we have a lot of qubits, we need to make sure that our qubits are actually good. And that's what kind of fault tolerant means, is the ability to correct errors that happen with qubits. Inherently, especially with superconducting qubits, they're very noisy and they're very prone to errors. And so we need some sort of way of mitigating and correcting for those errors if we want to build a truly fault-tolerant quantum computer. And so the way that IBM is going to realize this is with what they're calling the IBM Quantum Starlink, the world's first large-scale and fault-tolerant quantum computer. So what are we looking at here? Effectively, what this is is the infrastructure that is going to go into actually physically building this quantum computer. And so if we kind of zoom out, this is a really cool picture. They have IBM Quantum System 2 over here, which is what we're used to seeing. That's kind of what IBM, their flagship quantum computing machine right now. But then what we're going to get to in 2029, which is only a few short years away, is this IBM Quantum Starlink, 200 logical qubits and 100 million quantum gates. So what is a logical qubit? A logical qubit is an error-corrected qubit. You can think of it kind of like a perfect qubit. And that's going back to this word fault tolerance. And so right now... You can see the distinction between over here, it says supports 1000 physical qubits, the distinction between physical and logical. So effectively, a logical qubit is made up of a bunch of physical qubits. And a logical qubit you can think of as something that is basically perfect, right? It's not actually perfect, but it's effectively a basic unit that we'll use to do quantum computation because it is error corrected and because it is fault tolerant, we can rely on it to accurately produce the results that we want. And so it doesn't say exactly how many physical qubits is on here. And to me, that is actually the most concerning thing. So let me introduce myself. My name is Ari. I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM, and I work on scaling qubit control electronics so we can send data to and read data back from the qubits. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't think about when they think about building a quantum computer is how you're actually going to control the qubits, how you're going to send data to and read data back from the qubits. So this 200 logical qubits, that could actually be upwards of 10,000 physical qubits. Now, each physical qubit has its own lines that we use, literally wires, basically, that we use to send data to and read data back from it. Now, one gigantic challenge in quantum computing is actually figuring out how you can scale those control electronics so that you can not inject more noise into the qubits so that you can accurately read data to and read data back from the qubits and you can actually fit it in all this cryogenic infrastructure. So notice how the systems are just getting bigger and bigger. Look at the scale. So this, this is the quantum system too. It's effectively like four or five times bigger now once we get to the IBM Starling and then eventually BlueJay just you know blows everything out of the water. And that's because these quantum computers require an incredible amount of infrastructure. They require an incredible amount of cryogenics, incredible amount of software, incredible amount of control electronics, and it requires an entire team of people that are not just quantum physicists in order to make it work. So as a quantum hardware engineer at IBM, my biggest concern is how we are actually going to build this. Now, I'm actually fully confident in IBM's ability to build Starlink in 2029. However, we are only going to do it if we have the right team of people. And like I said before, we require people from a very diverse skill set, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and everything in between in order to make this system a reality. And a lot of people who are interested in quantum computing might not understand the fact that if you know anything about engineering or software, you can probably apply your skills to quantum computing and we need you. If you're good, quantum computing needs you and we need you at IBM in order to build this. Now, everything I'm saying here is just my own opinion. So that's my little disclaimer. I'm not speaking on behalf of IBM. I'm speaking on behalf of myself who wants to see quantum computing work. I personally want to see quantum computing work. And I think the only way that we are going to actually build Starlink by 2029 is with the right 
team of people. And I think some other people share my similar mentality. Let's just look. Here's a couple of screenshots from jobs that are live on IBM's website right now. Quantum hardware design engineer, analog mix signal ASIC designer, signal and power integrity system hardware developer, quantum verification engineer, quantum hardware engineer, flex signal integrity engineer, microwave design engineer. These are all for the quantum computing team. Now there's also some physics jobs posted, but there's the vast majority of the jobs posted for IBM Quantum right now are actually pretty much electrical engineering, mechanical engineering role. Quantum computing is not just about the quantum physics, the algorithms, the math. Quantum computing is so much more. It's control electronics, it's software, it's hardware, it's mechanical engineering, it's FPGAs, it's ASIC design, it's so much. So if you are somebody who's working in engineering right now, or you're an engineering student, click the top link in the description if you want to learn how you can transition your engineering skills into working for quantum computing. Quantum computing is going to blow up in the next couple of years, especially if we want to build IBM Quantum Starlink. We need to hire good people. We need to hire people with these amazing engineering skills to build this entire room full of quantum infrastructure. So if that interests you, click that top link in the description. I'll see you in the next video.